Yes, well, uh, sometimes in times of uh, disaster, you have to re resort to doing things the old-fashioned way, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, on the phone with us is Senator Bill Nelson. And uh, Senator Nelson, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of localized uh, local governments getting involved and in, in, in helping out with the recovery effort. But can you tell us a little bit about what is happening on the national level as far as getting things back uh, to, to some kind of a norm here in the Florida Panhandle? Uh, sure. Uh, first of all, let me give you a report about Tyndall Air Force Base. Yes, sir. Uh, I was uh, there uh, three days ago, uh, the first in, in my uh, capacity as the senior member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Tyndall is demolished. The hurricane hit uh, the eye. The, the commander, uh, Colonel Laidlow, showed me uh, a satellite photo. The eye of the hurricane was exactly the size of the 26,000 acres of Tyndall Air Force Base. And so, uh, as you know, that's why the eastern edge of the eye, being the strongest winds, were hitting directly on Mexico Beach, and it didn't have a barrier island out there on the Gulf to protect it. Those waters and that wind was coming straight off the Gulf into Mexico Beach, and likewise uh, into parts of Tyndall. Tyndall is demolished. Uh, the older buildings uh, are basically going to have to be scrapped and rebuilt. Uh, the newer buildings uh, withstood the wind, but there is a good bit of damage. And where the windows broke and the, uh, uh, the, the winds got inside, uh, for example, some of the new housing uh, that did not get up the, the shutters, uh, the windows broke. And uh, when the wind got inside, that completely destroyed the inside. Uh, the base commander evacuated 11,000 people. Uh, that included uh, dependents, families, uh, in a period from 5 o'clock Monday afternoon before the storm when he gave the order to evacuate. And the entire base was evacuated by 3 o'clock the next afternoon with only 93 people left. Uh, they were located in four locations, and in the middle of the storm, they relocated, consolidated to two locations. Uh, there was no injury or loss of life among those 93. Now, for the fears of folks around there that Tyndall may be shut down like Homestead Air Force Base was after Hurricane Andrew in 1992, let me assure you, that Tyndall will be rebuilt. It will become a modern uh, uh, Air Force base that will be an example of all future Air Force bases. And the reason is, it is critically located to the largest testing and training range for the United States military in the world. And that is the Gulf of Mexico off of Florida, the Eastern Gulf test and training range. Uh, and so uh, the, the commander right now, his main thing is to, first of all, secure the base, which he had the air police in there uh, with uh, their AR-15s uh, patrolling all the, the gates and the fences. Uh, and uh, quite a few aircraft were there. I am not uh, allowed because of classification to indicate uh, uh, the number of aircraft, uh, but everyone that was flyable, they got it out of there, but of course it's a major Air Force base and they have a considerable bit of maintenance there. So there were some aircraft, uh, F-22s, F-16s, and T-38s that were in uh, various states of maintenance that could not fly out. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, uh, 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 I know the people are so anxious, they dispersed the families to several bases around the country, 
And what the commander is trying to do is to get the base safe enough so that they can come back and claim their possessions from their houses on base housing if there is any left. Uh, and, and so that's a report on Tyndall. A, a good report to hear. As Definitely. You said. That, yeah, you put a, a, a smile on a, a lot of faces here in uh, the Florida Panhandle because it's it's such a uh, integral part of our economy here, especially to Callaway, Parker, and Springfield, the, the communities closest, and Mexico Beach, the communities closest to Tyndall Air Force Base. So um, and there's been a lot of rumors, you know, swarming around about Tyndall. So uh, we're happy to hear that they are going to rebuild and and try to get some sense of you know normalcy as well. And and, and you know, Tyndall is a big part of our economy senator so i think it's good to hear that uh they are going to rebuild and things are going to it's the space is going to stay here right. yeah well it's, a, it's important that we keep Tyndall going because uh, of our national security they're doing the training for the f-22s and that's all due to the fact that we have uh, uh, all those miles and miles of training area and they can do joint exercises uh, with the Navy and the Marines as well uh, because of the uniqueness of our Eastern Gulf test and training range. Uh, on, I've been all over the Panhandle the, the last week. I've been to uh, seven emergency operations centers. Uh, I can tell you that most of them are in a considerable can-do spirit. Uh, I found in some cases that they were still waiting for FEMA, for example, for blue tarpaulins. Uh, and up to that point yesterday, for example, when I was in Bluntstown and Apalachicola, uh, in one location they had not heard anything about the blue tarps, but up to that point there had been no rain. Uh, it's important to get those blue tarps in on those damaged roofs so people can save their houses and their belongings before the rains come. Uh, most of the emergency operation centers uh, felt like that FEMA was there. I found, for example, in some EOCs that uh, personnel that were emergency operators in other counties had basically moved from Central Florida and South Florida up. I saw a lot of firefighters, the same thing. I saw police, the same thing. It really made you feel good that the whole of Florida was pitching in. And then uh, I was finding uh, uh, FEMA incident uh, leadership teams that had even been flown in from Oregon uh, were, for example, helping run the EOC in uh, Port St. Joe. Uh, so, indeed, it's the whole country that's pitching in to try to help uh, Northwest Florida. Well, Senator Nelson, we are broadcasting this back. We're, we're, we are back up and running here at WMBB. Uh, so we're broadcasting over the airways on Facebook, on uh, our uh, mypanel.com. We're also streaming over the radio stations, 101.1 and 105.9. What is the message you want delivered to everybody out there listening today? Well, when a storm of this magnitude uh, happens, there's going to be a lot of disruption uh, that is obvious. Uh, there's going to have to be some patience. Uh, but where there are miscues, and there will be, uh, you need to report that to the authorities so that it can be corrected. Uh, let me give uh, you an example of uh, food and water. Uh, that's going to be necessary because I'm getting, in some of the rural counties, I'm getting estimates of a month, a month and a half will still be without electricity. Uh, that's important uh, and uh, people are going to have to cope uh, and uh, yet if FEMA is not showing up and you're not getting help you need to let the authorities know 
Uh, take, for example, one area, uh, education. I spoke to the Secretary of Education uh, today. I told her what I saw in the schools. Uh, most of the schools in Bay County are severely damaged, but you take a little county like Calhoun, Bluntstown, they've got five schools. The superintendent thinks that four of them are repairable, but uh, one of them is going to have to be demolished and completely rebuilt. This is going to take time. So I said, Madam Secretary, we need uh, a portable classrooms so we can get on with our students' education. Uh, and so these are going to be the things that we just take for granted in our everyday lives that we're going to have to rebuild from scratch. And uh, that's the message I want to leave, that uh, we'll overcome this uh, because we can all come together after a major uh, natural disaster like this, and we can overcome it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. Yeah. Yes, uh, like to hear that. We will overcome yes, this. We've heard that spirit amongst many of our officials here that we will rebuild. So uh, we appreciate you taking the time yeah. to speak with us this morning and giving us that vital update on Tyndall Air Force Base as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Senator Nelson. Okay. Look forward to seeing you again. Yes, sir. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So again, Senator Bill Nelson there on the phone as you just listened in on Tyndall Air Force Base. He got to see it for himself. This whole area uh, completely demolished, uh, but it will be it will be it will be staying open yeah. and they will rebuild. It's just going to take some time. You know, a lot of the base housing ruined and that they're trying to work on it now once it's safe enough, trying to get those families back in so they can kind of salvage anything that may be left. And he touched base. He touched a little bit on fraud. A uh, couple numbers for you. Uh, Insurance fraud. Uh, Jimmy Petronas's office uh, handles the uh, insurance fraud. If you if you if you know of any, call 1-800-MY-FLCFO is the number uh, to report any insurance fraud. And price gouging is happening out there, folks. It's hard to believe that people will take advantage of other people in a time of need like this. Report them. 877-9-NO-SCAM. That's 877-9-NO-SCAM.